a gorgeous suit that far outshone. Henley's Guild Club or Flecknoe's Irish Throne. All that wear on her curls. The public court. All bounteous. Fragrant rain and golden showers. Great Sibber Sate. The proud Parnasian sneer. The conscious simper and the jealous leer. Mix on his look. All eyes direct their rays on him. Not with more glee. Thy hands pontific, crowned, with scarlet hats, wide waving, circled round. Rome in her capital, saw Cronus sit, throned on seven hills, the Antichrist of wit. To grace this honored day, the queen proclaims, by Herald Hawker's high, heroic games. She summons all her sons. An endless band pours. <laughs> and leaves unpeopled. Half the land. A motley mixture. In long wigs. In bags. In silks. In creeps. In garters and in rags. From drawing rooms. From colleges. From garrets. On horse. On foot. In hacks. And gilded chariots. Amid that area wide, she took her stand, where the tall maypole once overlooked the strand. But now, so, Anne and piety ordain. A church collects the saints of Drury Lane. Glory, and, gain, the industrious tribe provoke. <laughs> and, gentle dullness, ever loves, a joke. No meager, muse rid mo, a dust and thin. In a dun nightgown, of his own, loose skin. But, such a bulk, as no twelve bards could rise. Twelve startling bards, of these degenerate days. All, as a partridge plum, full fed and fair. She formed this image, of a well-bodied heir. Never was dashed out at one lucky hit. A fool. So just a copy of a wig. So like the critics said, and 
Kotya swore. A wit, it was, and called the Phantom. More. All gaze with ardor. Summer poet's name. Others, a sword knot, and laced suit, in flame. But, lofty lintert, in the circle, rose. The prize, is mine, who tempted, are my foes. With me, began this genius, and shall end. He spoke, and who, with Lintert, shall contend? Fear, held them mute. Alone, untaught to fear. Stood, dauntless curl. Behold, that rival here. Swift as a bard, the bailiff leaves behind. He left, huge lintert, and outstripped the wind. As when, a dab chick, waddles through the cops, so, laboring on, with shoulders, hands, and head. Wide as a windmill, all his figure spread. With legs extended. Bernard edged the race and seemed to emulate great Jacob's pace. For in the middle way there stood a lake. Which tells Karina chanced that morn to make. Here, fortune curl to slide. Loud shout the band. And, Bernard, Bernard, rings through all the strand. Here, Jove, whose name my bards and I adore. As much, at least, as my gods, or more. A place there is betwixt earth, air, and sea. Where, from ambrosia, Jove retires for ease. There, in his seat, two spacious vents appear. On this, he sits. To that, he lends his ear, and hears the various vows of fond mankind. All vain petitions mounting to the sky. With reams abundant, this abode supply. Amused, he reads, and then returns the bills. Signed with an icor, which from God's distills. In office here, fair close in a stands. And ministers to Joe with purest hands. The goddess favored him, renewed by orgers. Sympathetic force. Vigorous he rises from the effluvia, strong.
provides new life and scars and stinks along. <laughs> We passes Lintert, vindicates the race. Nor he eats the brown dishonors of his face. And now, the victor stretched his eager hand. Where the tall nothing stood, or seemed to stand. A shapeless shade, it melted from his sight. Like forms in clouds, or visions of the night. To seize his papers, curl was next thy care. His papers light. Fly diverse, tossed in air. The embroidered suit, at least, he deemed his prey. So this gives you a little longer torso, uh, a little, definitely a slimmer silhouette. That suit, an unpaid tailor, snatched away. Heaven rings with laughter, of the laughter vein. <laughs> Dullness, good queen, repeats the jest, again. Three, wicked imps, of her own, Grub Street Choir. She decked like, Congreve, Addison, and Pryor. Curl stretches. After gray, but gray is gone. He grasps an empty Joseph or a John. To him, the goddess, son, thy grief lay down and turn this whole illusion on the town. Be thine, my stationer. This magic gift. Cook shall be. Prior. And, can cannon swift. So shall, each hostile name, become our own. And we, too, boast our, Garth and Addison. With that, she gave him a shaggy tapestry, worthy to be spread on Codrus's old or Danton's modern bed. Illus, on high, stood unabashed, deferred. And touched flagrant from the scourge below himself among the storied chiefs he stares <laughs> as from the blanket high in air he flies see in the circle next eliza placed Babes of love, close clinging to her waist. Fair, as before her works, she stands confessed. In flowers and pearls, by bounteous Kirkall, dressed. The goddess then, who best can. Send on high. 
the silent scout, fast breathing to the sky. This China Jordan, let the chief overcome. Replenish, not ingloriously, at home. Chetwood and Curl, accept the glorious strife. Though, one his son dissuades, and one, his wife. A second effort, brought, but new disgrace. For straining more, it flies, in his own face. Thus, the small jet, which, hasty hands unlock. Spurts, in the gardener's eyes, who, turns the cock. Not so, from shameless curl, impetuous spread. The scream, and soaking, flourished, over his head. Thou triumphest victor of the, high wrought day. And the pleased dame, soft smiling, leads away. Now, turn to different sports, the goddess cries. And learn, my sons, the wonderful power, of noise. With horns, and trumpets, now to madness swell. Now sink in sorrows, with a tolling bell. Improved wheelies, three cat calls. Be the bribe of him. Who's chattering? Shames the monkey tribe. And his drum, whose horse, heroic bass. Drowns the loud clarion of the brain ass. the queen. A cat call, each shall win. Equal your merits. Equal your din. But that, this well-disputed game, may end. Sound forth, my brayers, and the welkin, rend. <coughs> So swells each windpipe as in tones to us. <coughs> Harmonic twang of leather, horn and brass.
my children. Here, at one sleep in. Here, prove who best can dash through thick and thin. A pig of lead to him who dives the best. A pack of dolls, a piece, shall glad the rest. Next, smedley dive. Slow circles, dimpled over, the quaking muck. That closed, and, opened no more. Lo, smedley rose. In majesty of mud. Shaking the horrors of his ample brows. First, he relates how, sinking to the chin. soft, how, all the bards, arose. Slow, moves the goddess, from the sable flood. Her priest preceding, through the gates of love. Her critics, there, she summons, and proclaims. A gentler exercise to close the games, which most conduce to soothe the soul in slumbers. My Henley's periods, or my Blackmore numbers? Attend the trial we propose to make, if there be man who over such works, can wake. Sleeps, all subduing charm, who dares defy. Three Cambridge sophs, and three, her Templars came. Each grant, to query, answer, and debate. And smit with love, of poesy, and great. The ponderous books, two gentle readers bring. The heroes sit, the vulgar, form a ring. Soft, creeping, words on words, the sense compose. At every line, they stretch. They yawn, they doze. As to soft gales, top heavy pines, bow low their heads. And lift then, as they cease to blow. And now, to this side, now to that, they knock. As verse, or crows, infuse the drowsy god. Who sate the knee rest, by the words overcome, slept first. The distant, nodded to the hum.
Then, down unrolled the books, stretched, over them lies. Each gentle clerk, and muttering, seals his eyes. So, from the midmost, the nutation, spreads. Round, and more round, over all, the sea of heads. Thus, the soft gifts of sleep, conclude the day. And, stretched on bulks, as usual, poets lay. Why should I sing, what bards, the mighty muse did slumbering visit? And convey, to stews? While others timely, to the neighboring fleet, haunt of the muses, made their safe retreat.